Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again today. We're going to be checking out some emulation on this super small form factor PC known as the Lenovo Think Center M75Q Gen 2. Now, personally, I'm a big fan of this little machine. I picked it up to replace my old Think Center, which is exactly the same size, but it was getting a bit dated. It was powered by a fourth gen i5 CPU. And I got to say, the boost in performance from that old machine to this one is night and day. I recently did a video on this showing off some PC gaming 4K video playback. We also ran some benchmarks, so if you're interested in checking that out, link for that will be in the description. But in this video, we're going to be testing out nothing but emulation on this machine, from Dreamcast all the way up to the Switch. Now before I jump right into it, I just want to give you a quick rundown on the basic specs. For the CPU, we have the Ryzen 5 Pro 4650GE. 6 cores, 12 threads, base clock of 3.3, boost up to 4.2. For the GPU, we have built-in Radeon 7 graphics at 1900 MHz, and I have 16 GB of DDR4 running at 3200 MHz, and it is in dual channel. But this thing is actually packing quite a punch, given that we have that Ryzen 5 Pro 4650GE. So what we're going to be doing here is starting off light and then moving our way up through the emulators. First up, we have Dreamcast using the ReDream emulator. I'm upscaled to 3200 by 2400 With each one of these games, I will have Afterburner up in the top left-hand corner so we know what's going on with the PC. The name of the system, the name of the emulator, and if I'm upscaled or not. And I'll also have some box art on screen so you know what game we're testing out at any given time. Moving over to PSP and going into this, I knew we weren't going to have any trouble with this. 5x resolution using the Vulcan backend, and if you do want to go through and play the harder to emulate games like Ghost of Sparta, Chains of Olympus, or Midnight Club, you're going to be able to do it just fine, either using the Vulcan backend or DirectX 11, upscale to 5x with no frame skip and no hacks on. This system has more than enough power to emulate these PSP games. Next on the list, Sega Saturn using RetroArch with the Beetle Core. I usually test with the Oba Sanchiro, but that's on lower end systems. This has a pretty high clock on that CPU, and we get pretty decent single threaded performance, so using the Beetle Core with RetroArch is totally possible on this system. Get out of the way. I also wanted to throw in a little bit of Naomi and a Thomas Wave emulation. Here we have Demolish Fist, otherwise known as Demon Fist and it's running at full speed with the Flycast core inside a retro arch. Moving up on the list here from the lower end stuff to some pretty high end emulation, we have GameCube using the Dolphin emulator, upscaled to 1440p using the Vulcan back end. And most of these games will actually run at 4K, but I'm only on a 1080p monitor right now and I can only record in 1080p. So I just took it up a little past that and it looks absolutely amazing on this machine. And performance is great too with GameCube and even Wii. I got a few more games to test here and then we'll move up to PS2. Real quick, before we jump up the PS2, I wanted to show a couple Wii games running here. Still at 1440p, still using that Vulcan back end with the Dolphin emulator, and we're getting great performance. This little CPU and GPU combo is trucking through these games.
All right, time for PS2 using PC SX2 upscaled to 1080p using the DirectX 11 back end. We have Bloody Roar 3 looking good here, running at 60 FPS. Now you'll notice that with some games, you'll get a lot more GPU utilization. With this one, that's really not the case. We're sitting around 27 to almost 30%. But in the next couple games, upscale to 1080p using that DirectX 11 backend, you'll see that we're around 50 to 60% and sometimes even higher than that. But with everything that I've tested so far at 1080p with that DirectX 11 backend, it has run at full speed. And in the PC SX2 settings, I have this set right in the middle so there's not a lot of hacks running around in the background, it just performs really well. Even with games like Gran Turismo 4. Next up, we have PS3 using RPCS3 in the Vulcan back end. Really good performance here with a lot of the games that I tested. I did run into a few that just didn't run well, like Skate 3. But overall, I'm really impressed with the performance here. And this emulator does heavily rely on extra threads. And we have 12 of them with this Ryzen 5 4650G. So there's going to be a lot of games that are going to be playable with this. But you're going to run into some that are just too taxing for this little APU. But when it comes to games like Tekken 6 and even Demon Souls, run great on this machine. So here's Demon Souls, and then we'll move over to Skate 3 and I'll show you the performance there. So initially, going into Skate 3, I wanted to run this at 60 FPS on the system, but I just wouldn't hit it. So what I did was just turn it down to 30 in hopes that we could at least keep a steady 30, but unfortunately, there are some areas where it still drops down with this CPU setup. Great emulation performance out of this machine, and it actually does PC gaming quite well also. Definitely check out my first video. Now this actually wasn't specifically bought for emulation or gaming. This is my new work PC. It's replacing an older one that's exactly the same size. It's an older M5 Think Center M92P. But since I had the added power here, I figured I'd go ahead and test a few things out. And overall, this is a great little machine. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you want to see anything else running on this machine, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.